Hello creatives and welcome back to the design studio. I am Kat, owner of Kat's Creations and more, also Kat's Creations is uh, Reese, which you will find on Etsy. Um, so I am one in the same. So today I have been like, this has been an idea that's been in the back of my mind, trying to figure out how in the heck I can kind of put that together. And I think I figured out a way. So not sure how well it's going to work out, but like all good things, we're going to give it a go and see what happens. But if you have been with me any length of time, you know that last year um, we went through a period where there was a lot of Dragon Race. Dragon Race, you know, gained popularity. Everybody was making them. And then it boils down to how can you make it to where it's affordable to ship? So while you might be thinking, well, we can go bigger, we can definitely go like a broader range design. It's great if you're just making it for you or for somebody else, but if you're doing it for sale, you need to be able to keep the costs affordable rather than um, make them large expedited shipping. So that's what we're working on today. How to create a dragon wreath that's going to feature a dragon egg. And we needed to make sure that number one, the height didn't exceed six inches and the overall width in any one particular way between 24 and 26 inches. Because then if we are able to do that, then we can ship it and then it's not expedited over inflated shipping rates. So um, if this is your first time, I'd love to know that it's your first time, but also where you're from and... Um, Kind of like, how did you find your way through here? Were you like browsing or browsing on YouTube and then found me and decided to come over here today? Um, have I been somebody you've been following for a while? How did you find me? And then also, if you want to save this tutorial, super simple. Facebook users, you are going to simply click the share button. It takes this tutorial and puts it on your Facebook page. Super simple. YouTube subscribers is a little bit different. You're just going to click the share button on your YouTube channel and that'll save this tutorial through whatever means you have set up on your side um, to organize all of your tutorials. Also, how to turn on live notifications, both on Facebook and on YouTube. So YouTube is really super simple. You just have to subscribe. And then whenever I drop a new video, you're automatically notified. Facebook subscribers, it's a little different. It's a two-step process. Thank you, Facebook, for that. Um, you want to make sure that you're liking the page, but also following the page. And this applies to anybody on Facebook who you want to be notified when they go live. Once you click their like button, right next to that is three little dots. You'll open up that sub menu. You'll be able to um, see follow. Um, and then you're just going to go ahead and click follow. And then if you happen to be on your device, when we go live, you should receive a notification that says Cast Creations is now live. You can click on that and migrate your way on over here. Also, if you guys have not received the email notification, I am offering two free classes that are normally saved for my private group. And we're doing that tomorrow and we're doing it on Thursday. So tomorrow would be April 10th. 2024 at 4 p.m. Pacific, which is 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And also the same time on Thursday, we're going to do a design class and then we're going to do a business class so that you can kind of get an idea of what exactly goes on in her private group. Um, so it's a great opportunity for you guys to come ask me any kind of questions that we can fit into an hour time slot. And um, I'd be happy to chat with you there. So I'm going to post the website down below. If you are on my page right now, the pin post at the top gives you the link to register for the free class. It's not going to be on my public page and it's not going to be on my normal private group page. It's a specific VIP group that is geared for people who just want this like little sneak peek into what do we do on the business side and what do we do on the design side. So those are... Um, the link to that page is at the top. If you forget, um, well, let me go ahead and pin this. Oops. I cannot type today. But then when can I type? Okay. 
it was so nice when I had Steve's help and he did all this fun stuff for me. I know when you're just winging it so low, it's a lot more challenging. Okay, let me pin that for you guys so it's always available for you at the bottom of the page. Also, if you want to purchase this wreath, I'm only making one and um, it is available for purchase on my website. So you'll find the link for that there. Um, let's see. I have managed to heat up my shop to a nice balmy 70 degrees because it's super cold outside. It's like 40 degrees. I'm going to cover all the materials. Then I'm going to walk you through all the steps. And like I said, I've never done it before. So we're going to figure it out together. So I'm going to go ahead and pivot you down. So just hang tight. I'm going to attempt to do this. I always try to do it without causing too much of a distraction. Okay, so hi, Jen. Welcome. I know Elizabeth was there. Hi, Linda. Thank you for joining me. Um, so all the materials you're going to need, three different color deco mesh because um, the way that I design this is it is geared for three different colors, preferably color coordinating. You're going to need a ring board, which is a unique in the creek ring board. And then I have not found these except through one seller. This is called a modified unique in the creek board. It is a nine inch round. And as you can tell, it's only got three rows. Even the small flower bowl uh, board has four. So we're going to be using this. This is going to create the center for this wreath because if we put anything in the center, hello, there's nothing there. So we need to have something there and um, we're going to try to um, incorporate this modified board in there to create a base to hold our egg in this design. So you'll need both of those. You will also need a kit that you can purchase on Amazon. It is called a kids dragon costume kit and you get three pieces in it. You get the tail component with a little clip on the end that would be normally for kids clip it onto the back of their pants so they can have a dragon tail. You're going to get the dragon mask with the little elastic piece and you're going to get a set of dragon wings just like this. And so it's interesting how sometimes I'll look at people's dragon race and they have the wings like so, but it's supposed to be the two, the points, like all the points are supposed to go up at the top. So, um, they need to be this way so that all those kind of fan out. So always make sure your points are going up and when you purchase it depends on who you purchase them through. There are people who have purchased their uh, kids' dragon costume kits from Timu, um, and then sadly, they're not, they're not all designed the same. So while they may all have different price points, and some people would like to go with the cheapest amount possible, sometimes you sacrifice in that area by going cheaper. But what this piece does technically come with is this is usually attached to the back, like so it's kind of got like a couple pieces where it's threaded and then your child would take this and put their arms through and then they have wings on the back well you need to remove that so that's removed and then i have two free-flowing wings this way also you will need like i said besides the three different coordinating color deco mesh and they can be any colors you want um, you will also need a red and an orange and these are going to be for the flames. So it's an optional, optional flame feature that your dragon can have. In addition, you're going to need, this is a 1 8 inch braided cord. This is going to be our hanger. We are going to need dragon eyes. So you can get them in either a 30 millimeter or a 25 millimeter. Either one of them will work with the masks. Um, and I, I brought a few of them out so that you can see the different types of looks that you can get. Let me make sure I've covered all the pieces. You will also need felt, two pieces of black felt that helps with your eyes to give it some depth in the background. And oh, the egg, right? Here is the egg. So 
this is our golden egg. And I like that because it's a shiny egg, which means that when we place this in the center of our wreath and then kind of have our dragon built all the way around it, <clears throat> I like the fact that it reflects whatever, you know, whether you're looking at the petals, whether you're looking at, um, it just creates a really nice effect through the reflection. And I'll go through like how I modified this, where I got it and all the stuff as we get to that. So the first thing that we want to do is build our face. Um, and I will put all the, what do you call it? All the, the affiliate links for like the eyes, the kit. I'm trying to think. Um, one of the tools that we're going to be using tonight, I'll include my affiliate link for that. And those will all be found as I, the, as it goes into replay. So I can go in and edit that. Uh, YouTubers, it will be in the description box below this video. I always get people who message me and say, where are all the links? It's in the description box, which means if you're looking at it from your mobile phone, you're going to want to go to where it says like about and click on the more section. You can find all the stuff. So starting with the face portion, super simple. It just gives you a couple different options, which I thought were kind of interesting. Um, using different color eyes gives you a different look for your dragon, but there is the round eyes, not my favorite. They're always like when you're using the round version, you really have to make sure that your irises are centered. Otherwise you get like a weird, like I'm trying to get this one, like alter it sideways or something. You get like a weird lazy eye, a uh, dragon look. So I don't recommend using the ones that are round. They just give a goofy look. And then you have, okay, what colors? Well, the colors for my dragon are going to be gold. It is going to be a burgundy with a gold stripe. And then I am doing a solid matte color. So those are my colors. Now picking out my eyes, it was... It was challenging, but I just wanted to show you the different options and the different looks that you can get. Here's what we get if we wanted to go with uh, red on rag. Ooh, red on red. So you kind of get that look coming. And these, I said, are again the bigger 30 millimeter um, eyes. You also have the smaller ones. These are a little bit different. These are like a more red red, whereas the other ones are kind of like it has a, uh, a dual look to them. And so this is what I do when I'm playing with them is I'll take them and put them in the mask and go, hmm, how do I want that to look? Do I want the dragon's eyes to be more red or do I want them to be more golden? So there's the red set. Here's the true yellow, yellow. So here's the yellow set like that is a yellow dragon that definitely makes his eyes pop. And then we have this tan look here. Oops, trying to keep them in my hand the right way. Like that. So there is that look. So he's a little bit more like I feel like this one is like the two lighter colors definitely focuses on the eye color. Whereas if we go with a red, it kind of blends a little bit more into the overall design. So I think I am leaning towards these. Which ones do you guys have a preference for? Do you like the lighter? Do you like the yellow? Or do you like the red? red look. So I always start with prepping the face. That way when the face is done, it has time to dry. It'll be one of the last pieces that we add on to the design when we are finished. And keeping in mind that these are the colors of our mesh. We're doing the burgundy and then the solid red. Anna said the one you chose. You know what's interesting, Anna? Is that wasn't the original one I had picked. Um, Elizabeth says the red, so the red here or the red beaker, Elizabeth? 
originally when I came out here and started looking at all the prep colors and stuff, I had chosen these colors because I just kind of felt like they really, I don't know, they just kind of like, they looked a little bit different than the others. And like I said, it definitely made that color pop a little bit more. Uh, thanks, Sugar Pepper Design. She said, I like the yellow. Margie says the bigger red. So lots of options. You can order your eyes and when you get them, depends on which ones you get. If you order the 30 millimeter, I think you get 20 sets of different color eyes and they have the brown ones and they have the slit ones. If you order the smaller ones, I think you get 50 of the different color eyes and they're all different colors. So these are just what I've had left um, after um, all the other designs that we've done. So I think like you guys, I'm leaning towards the bigger red with the a lot of the pattern in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these ones back. Oop, trying to find, see, this is the way your dragon eyes will come for the 25 millimeter ones. Um, it was interesting when I ordered the 30 millimeter ones, not all of them matched, which was interesting, which is kind of a let down because you're not just going to use one eye. So the first thing we're going to do is on the back of your eye, because it's a little hard when we go to glue it to know, well, which way is my eye facing? So I have a tendency of taking the end of that point. So I'm looking at it here. I'm going on the back on the paper part. And I'm putting a little uh, dot there. Again, placing this one here. And then we're just going to connect. Doesn't have to be perfect. But this tells me, like, what is up and what is down. So that I don't have to, you know, keep holding them this way. So now, when I place them in my mask, this should be up. This should be up as long as I'm keeping them upright, but you still want to bring them back to the other side and just verify the look that you're getting is the look that you want. Sometimes the eyes may have a dark, a dark part at the bottom and it's just on one side and not the other. Make sure that both of them are facing the right direction. So I like that. I'm going to do one at a time. So... This is where you're going to need your black felt. And there are people who cut into their mask and then they try to insert the eyeball like up into the mask kind of look, but you don't have to go that extreme. I found that if you just take a simple piece of felt, cover that right over your eye, just again, verify the look on your eyepiece. You are good to go. So I am good there. And then what I'm gonna do is right in the center where my eye is, I'm gonna go ahead and glue and then along the edge of my felt, right here. So I'm gonna try to flip this around. I'm gonna lay that right over the top. And I'm just gonna tack everything down. So I've got my glue in the center when I flip this up. Again, if you want to make any last minute adjustments, like I kind of did, I want to make sure it's facing the direction I want before it sets up completely. So I've got one. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to go right around the eye socket on my mask. And wherever it's not wanting to stick, just go ahead and add your glue, flipping that over. Nice look. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. I'm thinking it's gonna go right here, but I definitely wanna double check. It looks like it was perfect. 
Sometimes you want them down a little bit further so they fill in that eye socket. And I'm pretty picky because if you get it wrong, it really distorts the view that you have of your dragon face. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go all the way around. I can even add some right at the edge of my apple. Right in the center. I could have done it right here too. And then right along the edge of my felt. Gonna take, lay that right over the top. Right in here. Let's make sure we've got our eyes adjusted where they need to be. Still not happy with this right one. I'm so picky because I want it to just be perfect. If your eyes are just off ever so slightly, then it's going to look a little odd. And I think I finally got them where they're both situated. So right there, oops, I'm trying to find the camera angle. We've got our dragon eyes facing in the same direction. So we're going to keep it flat right here. So this can all dry. Going to set that off to the side and now we are going to create the petals or in this case they're going to be dragon scales. Now people will say well this is a such and such petal or this is a such and such petal. Um, it could be. I, I'm not into the whole, like, what is that petal called? Because I do a slight little variation on it than what other people do. So we're going to take 10 inch deco mesh. And when we stretch this out, the one thing that I notice is that our deco mesh will kind of like, it goes in, it goes out. It doesn't sit 100% perfectly straight. Let me use these to hold that down so it doesn't move. So I make sure that I stretch. I'm using a chisel point, which looks like a knife blade. I am starting at the 10 inch mark. So here it's right at my 20. I'm just going to follow the line in my mesh all the way down no matter what it's doing. That way I know that I've got a 10 by 10 inch piece. We're gonna do the same thing. Make sure everything matches. It's a little hard sometimes. Find 10 inches, start in a row. Stay in your row like you're a car on the freeway. All the way through. Okay, we're gonna do four pieces because I saved four for the final end. There we go. Find a lane, pick a lane, stay in your lane. It's just weird at the very, very end. It kind of goes a little wonky. But if you notice, I am pulling these all out. It's hard to get your deco mesh to be exactly perfect, but we can try to get it fairly straight. And it goes pretty quick. So there we go. I'm using a wide foil metallic. I prefer to have the shiny instead of the other look. I think I'm done with this. So wood burning tool, tempered glass, or just a glass cutting mat just will make your deco mesh cutting. Um, it'll be life changing. That's all I can say. Changed my life for me. So how do you make the scales. We are taking a six inch zip tie. We're going to take our deco mesh. We're going to put it. So I have like the finished edge on the top, finished edge at the bottom. I'm going to take this corner. I'm going to bring this corner to the opposite corner. We're going to try to match it up about as best as we possibly can. 
Now, if you notice that you are way over on one side or the other, more than likely your deco mesh is not cut 10 to 10. It might be like 10 by 10 and uh, two fifths or 20, 0.25, 10 and a quarter, 10 and a half. Make sure. So if your deco mesh is a 10 and a half inch mesh, then you're going to want 10 and a half inch pieces so you have that perfect square. So we're going to go from this corner. I am holding the mesh at the bottom with my thumb. I'm going to take and go one corner to the other. And our focus really is this corner here. You start to get into what's known as like the Star Trek pedal. And then we're going to place our finger here and we're just going to fold one over the other and you get this little pedal. And some people leave it open. I don't like that look. We're going to zip tie at the very bottom where those ends kind of come together. Just right in here. Just like that. And this is where my variation comes into play. So I like to see pointed tips. If I'm creating a dragon, I want to see scales because that's kind of what our deco mesh is doing. So you'll notice that you have two folds on one side and a singular fold here. I just take my hot glue, I run it right along the edge. I take and push those together, making sure that I've got a point at the top for my scale. And then I'm gonna simply take a clothespin or you can take a chip clip and you're just going to hold those together until that glue sets up. So we'll do another one. We'll save the other two for when people come in halfway through. Um, again, top mesh edge here and the bottom, turn it on the diagonal, take the top corner to the bottom corner, and then just try to match up your mesh as best as you can. We're gonna go from this corner to the other corner focusing on this edge. Now we have our Star Trek pedal. I'm gonna hold this in the center so that I can flip this right over the top. And then I've got my little point. It kind of just naturally curves into like, I don't know, little shark tail with a point on the end. Zip tie right at the base. Nice and tight because I don't want it moving once it's in place. And again, run a bead of glue in there. Seal those edges. Keep your point intact. And then we're just going to chip clip it until it dries. So that is how I make my dragon scales. I'm a little bit more particular in the look that I want to achieve. And that's why I need the point. I want them closed. I don't want them open. I want them like, I need them closed. I don't want the, the ends open. And you'll see why on the finished product. Okay. So that is our scales. You will need 16 of each color. So in my case, I have 16 gold, 16 red with a gold stripe. And then I have 16 with the solid red. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna trim the end piece off. So I usually like use my thumb as a guide. I usually will just take and cut that so that I still have a little bit of a tail, but not an overly huge tail. Just something small, just short, sweet, and simple. Any questions you guys have on that? Hi, Charlotte. Thanks, Anna, for sending stars. I appreciate that. Um, Charlotte says, I made two, to the, two of these and enjoyed it. They're amazing. They are. So, ready to, to start. Okay. Um, let me show you, number one, how I have wired my board. So, on the ring board, right now, what I have done is I have six-inch zip ties to the outside holes nothing in the center hole and nothing sharing. So I have 16 on the outside, 16 here. And then as we 
add in our metal, our middle petal or scale, we're going to be alternating a shared hole here or a shared hole here. The one closest to the inside ring, I call it the shared inside hole, which means that we'll be taking a pipe cleaner or a zip tie and going from this hole to that hole. That is the shared inside. If it's the shared outside, it's going to go from here to here to add our middle petal. And so by staggering or stair stepping those petals, you'll see it kind of creates a very full look. Or if you wanted to, you could add four sets of scales and just make sure that you have outside, um, outside, inside, you can share the inside and you can share the outside holes. Those are entirely up to you. Now, the modified board. This is the one that's going to go in the center, but I've got to attach the egg to the modified board. And if you look at the way the modified board sets up, and I apologize for all the um, zip ties in the way, I took my egg, where's the other half? I had taken my egg, which I had gotten from Michael's, it came like this, one of those funky little eggs, and I cut it in half so that I have two eggs if I needed to, but before I cut it in half, I glued the halves that come together that allow you to put stuff inside so that as I was cutting it, it wouldn't separate as I was going down the edge of my egg. So one egg gives you two different looks and it actually fits perfectly right inside this whole opening using that shared board. Here's where another tool comes into play because we need a way to secure this. I'm not going to glue it to the board. You could do that, but I'm always about trying to find a way to make it really work. And if we do it this way, you could, it's going to technically cover up a lot of things that we, we struggled with, like the little bottom portion of the wings sometimes, or if you want to remove the center section, you can take the egg out and just have the regular wreath. Okay. So in order to do that, we need to take our egg and center our time. fits the bottom of the ring. It doesn't fit the bottom of our board so that they fit. Let me use my marker on that shared board and I'm going to look at where would the shared holes kind of come into play a bit. So right there, right there, uh, right here, and right there so that it tells me approximately what locations will I need to secure my egg on. Now this is where we get into the secondary tool. So what I've done on one side, just to make sure it worked, is I um, drilled a small hole into the bottom here and the bottom here that correspond, they correspond to uh, this location and this location on the side so that I can kind of match those up and then make sure that they match on the opposite side and they do. So that's how it's going to hold the egg onto the, the center and you're just going to have this portion here but what you fail to realize is that when we start adding the scales to the ring, it covers around the outside. So it should kind of butt right up against this egg in theory, if it works correctly. So to put the holes in, I'm going to use this little tool called a mini cordless rotary tool. This is a Hardell. I'm going to get my drill bit out of here. Um, Let's see if I can find it. It always likes to hide. Here it is. Right up against the side. So let's make sure those don't get scattered. 
you have to depress the center button and that'll allow you to unscrew the top. Put our drill bit inside. We're gonna tighten that. I don't want it to go all the way down. Opened it a little too wide. Let's go ahead and get that on. Sometimes I undo it too much. Okay, there, nice and tight. Um, it gives me four speeds, so low, somewhat low, medium, and high. And then it goes off. Well, no, there's a fast, I guess. You also have a light that lights up so that I can see exactly where I'm working. So my goal is to match up on my egg exactly where my holes need to be on the side. So I have these little marks here. I am going to put this on medium and then I'm just going to take and put my hole right in the center. There we go. I'm gonna kind of hone it out a little bit. So it's a little big for my zip tie to go in. I'll come back over here and do the same thing. There we go. Okay, let's see if that fits. There we go. Let's see if that works. So my goal is, will my zip tie fit in that hole? It's a little snug there. It's a little snug there, so let's just kind of make it just a touch bigger. So I'm just gonna go off to the side a little bit and make those just a touch bigger. Make sure we can get our zip tie in. And that one's an in. This one, we can get those in. So now we are going to secure our egg through the zip tie. I'm go ahead and put two of those in for this side. I'm going to line these up right where we have our lines on the board. So it's going to go in the outside shared hole right here. Once Kat actually puts her zip ties in the right way, we're gonna lightly zip tie this in. I'm not gonna tighten it down just yet because I wanna make sure everything else lines up. that in there. I think this one's going to go a little further down. Let's see. I am looking for where did I put my holes. I had one there. I have it sideways. I can have this one. We'll just line these ones up over here. It was so nice when I just did the first one and I had them on the side and I was like, oh, that's gonna work out perfectly. Again, making sure my zip ties where it needs to be. Oops. It's not as hard as it is until you have to do it live, right, on a Facebook video. Let me go ahead and just lightly secure that in so it won't move too much. We will zip tie this down to the side. This one is going to go right in here. Hopefully, 
hoping this works. Because the cheater's way would be like, oh, I'll just use some glue and just slap that down. Yeah, I could, but I don't want to. Because if you don't want it, you can take it off, right? That would ideally be what we're looking for. I'm just trying to get this last zip tie in the right way so that the last one's always going to be the challenge right into that shared hole and I think I think we've done it there's that one there's that one that one Oops. Push that one back through. So now our egg is secure. Let's hope that works. Okay. There, there. There. And here. I know you might be asking yourself, mm -hmm. how's she gonna attach that? Yeah, I started thinking about that after the fact. But I'm going to set this aside just for one minute. We're going to add the cord before I forget to do that, the hanger. So you always want to look on the Unique in the Creek frame. At the very top is going to be one that has two holes. We're going to add our hanger really quick to that. So we're going to go down. From the glue that's on the side of this so it fits in the hole just a touch better. Down in the hole. I want to make sure I still have access to that hanger that's going to need to go from the outside. We're going to push this to the end and right about there should be a good length for our hanger. We're going to go ahead and trim that off. We're going to go right over left and then left over right. That should give us a really nice knot, square knot. We can trim that up, but basically it's gonna be on the inside, so here's our outside. This will all be on the inside where nobody's gonna see that, which is all my whole thing. Let's hide the mechanics somehow, right? Okay, so if this is our top, our egg needs to sit directly inside. So you can see that the egg is pretty free, free, ugh, free floating here. Super simple. Do you guys have any idea how I'm going to attach that while I um, pull my tools apart? I love this little tool. It um, prevents me from not using Steve's stuff, but you can use a Dremel as well. I will post the link for this in the description box for YouTubers, and it'll be on the materials list for everybody else. But how can we attach this on the inside so that it's kind of free floating? And I may wait before we attach it. I'm still debating <coughs> if I should attach it now or if I should attach it later. I think I'm gonna attach it now because I wanna make sure, number one, that the petals or the scales that we create, and I'm just taking the ones around the outside where you've got the, the little zip part. No matter, even if I put them over here, it's kinda of where I want them to sit. I want them on the top so that I can zip my pieces in. Same thing up here on the top. Have you guys figured out how we're attaching it yet? Um, Elizabeth said zip ties. So how would I zip tie it, Elizabeth, since it doesn't fit in the inside? Like it's not a blush fit, but a great idea. 
So A, again, we want to make sure that the egg is facing up because that's the way our wings are going to be. Um, we'll polish the egg a little bit later because it's got like fingerprints all over the side. But Elizabeth is right. We are going to attach it with zip ties. Um, let's see. I'm going to grab some thicker ones, a little bit longer ones. So this is just going to free float in the center. So when you do that, again, making sure all your zip tied little ends are at the top. I think the weight drives them to the bottom. So there, 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 there are all done. We're actually just going to attach this to the inside of our zip tie like this, but we need to make sure that wherever we line it up, it, cor it corresponds like this one is pretty darn close to this one. I've got one a little bit lower, but I think it'll work. And I might just, let's see if these will stretch. Again, let's get the zip tie parts. I never want to stay. Makes me want to just tape them in place. So I'm going to go under right here. I'm going to do a shared hole space right here with this one. And of course, now that I pick it up, they'll all roll around to the underside. So I'm going to kind of just lightly get my zip tie in place. It doesn't like to share a hole with that one. So just a nice soft zip tie so it won't get stuck. So see how I'm making sure that all of my, my pieces are up. Why? Because once I tighten that, it'll kind of be a little bit challenging to get them to line up again. So again, shared hole inside right here. Zip tie that. And then this is where they're going to kind of just do this thing. And make sure that you've got equal placement. And we'll be able to also do that to the bottom. But we're going to have to do it on the underside of the board. Because right now it wants to pivot a little bit. <clears throat> also, once we put the dragon wings in, the wings on the back are going to keep this from moving forward. So, so far, it's working. Okay, now we're going to add all the scales so far. So, the first thing I want to do is cut my zip tie for the egg base. Again, right up here. Now, the color palettes that I have is I'm going to do the gold and silver to the inside, kind of like the underside of the dragon's belly. I'm gonna do red to the outside and I'm doing gold in the center. So I'm gonna start right here with my shared hole and I always wanna make sure that my tips, you can put them either way, but just pay close attention to whichever way you do it, you wanna make sure that I always do it with the opening side here so that these will fan out this way. It kind of looks like a sun by the time I'm done, but I'm just going to take this. I'm going to lay this on the board with the zip tie that I have on it um, under the zip tie that I'm putting it in. So you'll see it like this right there. I'm going to trim this one off. I'm gonna add my red piece to the outside here. Same way, make sure my opening, let's trim that off. The opening is facing here. We're gonna have a slight overlap. Make sure that your zip tie is under that because then when you go to fluff or maneuver your petals, they won't pull out. And then you'll see, now this is where we begin the shared or non-shared holes. And I think I'm gonna go shared with the center 
maybe shared to the outside since we already shared an inside hole with the other. So I'm going to the hole on the outside in the middle. Just going to kind of create a spot for that. Again, outside, all my scales are facing the same direction. And we're just going to zip tie that down. Now, we're going to do that all the way around the whole design. Same thing. We're going to start with our scale color here. Getting that underneath. We'll lay that up. We're adding the red to the outside. Again, always making sure your petal is the exact, you know, that you've got your open side on the same side. You will be able to actually fluff this and expand it larger than what it fits in the box as. Now this one, because we shared the outside hole, we want to share the inside hole here. We're doing that stair step. So I'm going the outside hole in this one, in the middle, placing the end of our tail in here. And you can see how the tricolored look is now factoring in. And you have quite a bit of flexibility. I mean, you can really pull these out if you want. Our whole goal though is to make sure you can't see the board and that we're slowly filling in that gap. Okay, three more. This one's gonna be here. It's always going to be the red and the gold on the inside. You can take those ends, those little edges, if you want and push them in so that your scale pieces lay more flat. There's that one. And then our gold. This one's going to be the outside. So it's going to go in the middle and then up the hole closest to the outside. This is our outer middle piece. Make sure everything's facing the same direction. But do you see how now that gap that we had right alongside our egg is now being filled? And that reflection of the colors is starting to pop on the outside. So here, When I create them, it's whatever, like I can always tell which side my pieces go in because if I have the top of my zip tie on top, that tells me that's the way it goes in. If it goes this way and I don't see the end, I've got my scales in the wrong way. And we're gonna add our outside. So the whole goal of the gold is to get it to fit on the inside. Like it fills in that gap between the two. Again, feel free if you want to remove that. I did this one outside, so we're doing shared on the inside. So I'm going up the inside. Whoop. This one goes right in the inside here. Three more pieces, one of each color. So now we have this laying in. Now we're getting really close to the base of our egg. And this will be shared whole to the outside, which simply means zip tie starting in the middle. 
and going to the outermost hole so they're stair-stepped in the center to fill. Okay. I don't know why I do that. I always leave like the little pieces on the end and they should just go in the trash. Like I leave them piled up and I'm like, why do I do that? Just throw them in the trash. It's right there. Okay, inside, I'm gonna grab my zip tie. So in this version, it is the dragon kind of protecting the egg. So, and the size of this egg is, it is a 10 inch tall, egg by seven and a quarter inches wide. So I found it at Michael's, obviously during Easter. And I was like, hmm, I was always like trying to imagine what would happen if the dragon was trying to protect their egg. What would that look like? So again, here we go. Elizabeth says, I love the mesh color you chose. Thank you so much. And let's get our continued pieces in. So like I said, 16 of each color. Each piece is cut 10 inches by 10 inches. Again, depending upon your mesh. If you happen to have a mesh that is 10 and a half inches wide, then your pieces would be 10 and a half by 10 and a half. Make sure that one stays up. I don't want it going to the back of the board. And this one's going to be shared outside. So here to here. Flip that in. And those little extra tails are also filling the colors of our board. They're like adding a dimensional color to the board. One, two, three. Oops. There's that one outside. And then our inside piece this one's going to be inside, which means middle hole, and this one closest to the egg we're sharing. And the only reason that I'm doing that, like staggering, is to give you more full coverage with that center piece that's going inside here. <coughs> What do you think of how it looks so far? Taking this one out. So see all this gap? It's all getting filled in by all those petals that are going in, or scales. I always say petals because we use them on the flowers, but in this case, I want them to look like dragon scales. And we're sharing outside hole, which means middle and that outside closest to just the solid red. So this one will go in. Again, you can push all your zip ties flat. So when you put them more flat than the next consecutive pieces that come on top of those, we'll be able to lay more flat. Okay, this one is going over. And 
are red. Zip that one in. And we're doing shared inside. Oh, this poor little space has like the egg is attached to it. It's got the red and gold scale. And now we're adding another piece to the shared. So this is why having smaller zip ties really helps. There we go. We're coming here. There's that one. The outside. And then this will be an outside hole. Because our other one was an inside. So there's that one. Gold. All the scales are facing the exact same way. So for me, they resemble more along the lines of what I feel like dragon scales would look like. Don't know, haven't seen one, can only rely on what nature has to mirror what we would think. There's this one. Oops. One up and over. This one is shared inside. So that means inside hole is shared with the middle. And that'll be our gold. And again, we can adjust these to move them in closer to fill the gap as we get around to that section. Now, um, I'm trying to think when we've done this in the past, I think we add, I think we do all the scales and then we attach the wings. I think that's what we do. So I'm going to show you what this will look like. Let me get these pieces in. And then I'll use another ring board to show you what I'm doing that you cannot see because we have all the scales built. Outside piece. And now we've got our gold. which is going to be shared outside. So the middle hole and the outside, one, the hole closest to the outside. Right in here. So the same holes that we use for our cord are going to be the exact same holes I use to attach the wings but I got to put in all my petals before we can attach the, the, or all the scales before I go in and attach the wings. So there we go. Trying to get that one in. And the red to the outside. It's going to go over here. Trust me, I will make sure that you can see exactly what I did to attach the wings. And then we're going to have to make our other two petals because we haven't done the outside one. So this is going to be shared to the middle. So 
so many complexities, right? I mean, there's lots of other easier tutorials to follow, but I just have this, I'm so picky on what I want it to look like as far as my finished design. So I'm like, how can I make this like work the way I envision it in my head? So we're gonna go in and grab that little zip tie. We're finishing up the last two sets. So there's the one. Here's the second. It's gonna go under here. Oops. And I've already measured the egg. We are fine with the depth. Cause I was like thinking, oh, is it gonna fit in the box? Let's make our last two petals really quick. I'm gonna push this to the side. So here's how we make our petals. Here's our 10 inch deco mesh again. Finished edge on the top and the bottom. Turn it on its diagonal. Go from the top corner to the bottom corner and get a good as match as you possibly can. It's not gonna be perfect. Hold the bottom so that it doesn't move around and you're gonna go from this corner to this corner. And I'm just gonna kind of line everything up. This is your Star Trek petal that people refer it to. We're gonna hold the middle and we're just gonna fold the end up and that gives us that little dolphin tail, shark tail, like little look. Some people you've seen when they're doing their flowers, they do it this way. This one we're doing on the side. And then because I want to keep that point intact, I'm gonna come in and lay in a small bead of glue. I'm going to match up all my edges Make sure we've got our tips intact and we're just going to chip clip it till it dries. Same thing here. We're going corner here to corner down at the bottom. We're going to lay this out. We're going to go from corner here to corner here. We're like really focused on this section here. So we get a good fold, hold the center, lift the top, and then we're zip tying it right at the bottom where they come together. And then taking the two ends to the one, we're taking the top two, a bead of glue right down the center, Kind of fold those so they stay nice and pretty with the little tip intact. This is that key position now, okay? Let those dry. Um, while they're drying, we can cut the ends, which is just use your thumb as a guide and only cut it to the length in which you are right up against your thumb. And then those pieces are ready to go in our design so far. So the last section is the hardest one to get those in, but we still have to finish the outside hole here. So we've got to add our gold to this row before our final row. Making sure this is dry enough should be okay. We're gonna flip it over. We'll lace this right on the inside. Zip tie that down. Just like that. And I am fine with having it just kind of come up across the egg a bit. Now our outside ones, here's our last one. You're gonna have to lift up the ones that are here to slide in your last dragon scales. I'm trying to get my zip part at the top. It's just gonna go right in, 
right underneath the other one, making sure that my zip tie stays to the right so that it doesn't pull out if the customer wants to go in and you know move their um their scales around this one's going to tuck in right underneath here it's always fun getting the last pieces in it's always a challenge whether it's the last piece of deco mesh whether it's like the last embellishment you're putting on that have to go underneath the ones that were there before. And then now on this one, we're doing shared inside. So here's my zip tie for shared inside hole. We're going inside and then up. And that is where our last gold piece will be. Making sure our pieces are the same way all the way through. So you can see I have a pretty consistent look all the way through the design. All the pieces are on the same side. They're all facing in the same direction. And then, like I said, what the client can do is they can move these pieces out if they want a wider wreath, but for shipping purposes, we keep everything in so that, because remember for us, it's going to be about box size dimensions. And even in the dragon care letter that goes with this, it says, if you want a more fuller look, take your outside scales and move them to the outside. But that is, what we have been able to achieve thus far. And then, like I said, you could move these in, you could paint the lower portion of the board. You don't even have to have the egg in. Really super simple if you wanted to remove the egg out. If we flip it over, we're just gonna remove those two zip ties and out comes the egg. Okay, so now we have to attach the wings. So, remember how I told you that you have to separate your wings because they're going to come together based on a costume. And so what you're going to need to do is line up your holes. This is where having another board handy helps. You're going to want to line up your holes. Remember we said spikes go up. So there's the right side up. All the points go up. You want to make sure, because this is where we're going to attach it, that where these wind up, you want to keep it small enough because we got to keep it shippable. So we don't want to pull our wings way up here because what you will notice is if you add two holes down here, they're going to be really on the outside of this little piece here. And we need it to kind of have a meteor chunk. So we're bringing it up a little bit higher, which means that once our scales are here, you won't see all these gaps. This portion that's right here in the center will be hidden by the top portion of our egg. We no longer have to worry about, you know, readjusting our scales and pull those down to cover that. So you're going to line this up just like it is. And you're going to take your wood burning tool when it's hot in a very well ventilated area. I can't stress that enough. And you're gonna take your wood burning tool and you're gonna go right through the center and you're gonna burn and you're gonna do the same thing here. Once you have those located, you're gonna remove your ring. You will pick this up, take your wood burning tool and then proceed to burn all the way through, it's actually there, to the other side. So on both sides. And this will put off some way crazy toxic fumes. So that's why I highly stress, do it outside, do it in the garage space where it's open. So what we are going to do now is from the back side of this, I'm going to put in a zip tie here and a zip tie here. Cause these are now how they're going to get attached to my board. 
Now they're going to get attached like this because you're not going to see it because I have all the scales. You're going to kind of take them and lay them right over that hanger spot. You're going to pull your zip ties up, pull your zip tie up, and now your wings are attached. Does that make sense? You're not going to see it. This is the only way I can explain it to you is to take a regular one that there's nothing on because everything else is all in here. So again, flipping this over, we're going to be using those shared holes. We want to make sure that we don't impact our hanger, that like we get our hanger hung up in there somehow. So again, taking this, it's easier for me to do it this way. I am going to make sure I don't get my hanger in there. I'm going to line up one side. Oops, so hard to do it this way. There's one in here. Okay, that one's all done. This side is going to do the same thing and I'm probably going to pull it out without meaning to. And you can do one side and then the other, whatever is easiest for you. So right here I have my wings attached. I'm just going to cinch that down as tight as I can possibly get it. And then I'm going to remove whenever it wants to snap. That's one side in. I've got my one wing attached. And now, if I haven't managed, I did, I managed to pull it out. So, going to go in that secondary hole, keeping my hanger free. And I'm doing the same thing here. We are fastening our wings on. So those are just going to lay underneath the petals and our wings are attached just like so you can maneuver them in you can lower them however your desired look is but now our wings are attached so now we are ready for the dragon face which we had had already prepping so there's a couple options for you you can put your dragon face right in the center you can position it off to the left you can position it off to the right. It's entirely up to you as a designer. For me, when I'm thinking about this logically, I'm like, it. I don't really think that it makes sense this way unless you hang the tail. Like when I look at this, I'm thinking that a dragon is kind of coiled up, like protecting its egg. So I kind of feel like that the face needs to be a little bit over here so that this is the coiled portion. And then the tail will come out the opposite side. What do you guys think? How are you guys feeling about that? So many different ways that you can design it. And it's going to be entirely, honestly, up to you and the design choice that you have. So I like mine a little bit off to the side. Like right in here a little bit. So remember that stretchy cord in the back? You're going to cut that stretchy cord because that's how you're going to attach it. Okay, now we are going to weave this in between that extra board. So I'm gonna pull that down a bit. And I'm gonna take this one and I'm going to attempt, attempt, to attach this because we've never done it with the other one. And I'm trying to look and see, do I want it up higher? Do I want it there? Do I want it a little bit higher? Because I have to either go just below where it is right now because of where our zip tie is, or we can go a bit above. I'm thinking I want it just a touch above. So I think I'm going to go above that zip tie location. So I'm just going to go up and right in between that gap. I'm going to pull my mask over. I'm going to pull one of my 
scales out of the way. And now when I go to pull that mask, I'm actually just tying it on. So again, if the customer has a different preference of what they would like, they can move it. It is movable. So I just have it in a simple, easy to untie and tie again knot. So that is my desired look for this particular dragon. Now, there's two other options. You can um, create flames for your dragon. I'm going to show you how to make those before we attach the tail. The tail is always the last thing and it doesn't come attached. It comes in the box so the customer can either leave the tail off. They can place the tail somewhere else. They can reposition the face. They can kind of do their own thing. But here's how we make the flames. You're going to need three red, three orange, cut to 10 inch pieces. We are going to get a fairly large zip tie and we are going to take these and we're going to curl them on the ends. So we're just going to start right here on the corner and you're just going to roll it just like this. Kind of like what you do for a tulip stem. We're going to hold that. This is where those chip clips come in handy yet again. We're going to do it with the orange. So all I'm doing is rolling the ends up, getting it started and just letting it roll. It does not need to be perfect. Matter of fact, it looks a little bit better if they aren't perfect. We'll do the red. Now, depending upon what color dragon you have, if you're doing the silver and like blue, like ice dragon, you could take silver and blue and white and make it more like an ice flame. Okay, here's this one. I'll use my little clothespin because those work great for this. So three of each, roll them up nice and tight. pin again. We'll do the red and then the orange. I'm trying to get them more on a diagonal because then it makes them just a touch longer. Two more. There's that one. And then this one. Remember I told you we were going bigger, much bigger than we've gone before. Kind of like last week we did the House of Cards. Um, now we're doing the dragon, right? Okay, so now what you're going to want to do is you're going to combine them, but you're going to vary the lengths. So I want you to pick a central part. So whether you go long, but that you can still, you know, hang on to it. This one, let's make it a little longer on one side. So see how I'm staggering the lengths. This one, let's go a little long. I'm just trying to line them up. We'll take the red, do the same thing a little bit longer. And then here, we'll go a little bit longer. Now, where I have all these held, that's where I'm gonna take my zip tie a little bit thicker didn't mean to pull it all the way through. And I'm just going to zip tie these all so they're flat. Nice and tight, okay? So that they're all in a bundle. And now what we're gonna do, <laughs> should have done this first. Let me go ahead and um, snap this off. We need to get them in half, sorry. So here, Let's just do four instead of the other ones. Let's do them this way. Since we're going to create, um, let's go in, out. We're going to fold them. 
And now is when we do the zip tie, the meteor zip tie. So we're making a bundle of flames. Same thing. Sometimes you can, you know, squeeze the other ones in, but not necessary because when we did them in the half, you just want to make sure, however, that all the pieces logically work. They're kind of like alternating the colors. Get this one to go in here. Everybody share space. Nice and tight so that you have a nice big bundle like this. Now this bundle, I don't attach. Why? Because some people don't want the flames. But the way that it sits is super simple. You just lift up the snout, you place this inside, and that is the way that it sits so that you have flames if you desire it. If you don't, super simple, just take it out and you're good to go. Okay, last thing, attaching the tail is going to depend on you as a designer, your preference. I like my tails, get rid of these and all of this so you can see. The tail is basically, you wanna make sure, number one, that your scales are on the right side. They need to be over here. See why our dragon scales are all going in the same direction as his tail? Because logically it makes sense. I have people who like it, but they want their tail a little bit more curved, which they can do. You're just gonna to wanna to attach the tail portion. They're gonna to wanna to slide it in and attach it. And then based on that, um, I did it once, is we attached fishing line to the bottom and drew it up so that it made sense, I think the way that I designed it to look, if that, if that kind of like dials in. But right now, my, um, I need my larger zip tie. Let me grab this and show you how we're gonna go in and attach the tail. So wherever you logically want the tail to be, whether you want it down, like I think right there makes a really good tail position. We are going to take a larger zip tie. I'm gonna lift up all the other zip ties that are in here and I'm gonna create a base for hanging. So we've got a lot being shared in the same spaces. Of course, I would pick the same one that has the egg in it, but we're going to create a hanger, which is just super simple. Just create, I'm going to show you, a zip tie like this so that this is going to just simply attach. So we can make it nice and tight. We're going to take this off. I'm going to unclip this for now. And then I'm going to take my red Sharpie and I'm going to color this location on the zip tie because they get on the Dragon Care instructions and it's on here and it's on here. It says insert tail under the red colored zip tie, depending upon your look. So this is just going to be for them. They come in they clip that on and then they can go ahead and just reposition their scale directly over it you know reconfigure everything else that they like and that is the finished look you ready to see it on the door where it all will make more sense than what it does here because i ran out of space we're like finished design is roughly 36 38 inches long I think. Thank you, Jane. She says, I watch a lot of your tutorials and you are the best teacher. Thank you for sharing your talent with us. I'm always about you guys figuring out how you can do this because if I can do it, you can do it. My goal is to make sure you can do it. I'm going to pivot you up. So bear with me one second. I think, hold on a sec. I hate grabbing the mic part because it's all. We're going to take this one down. 
and we're gonna put this one up. So we're hoping everything stays together. So I'm putting it on my hanger. Of course the tail's gonna fall off because I don't have it on. Um, I'm gonna position that. The head will automatically naturally wanna pull it downward. And this is where you need your counter counterbalance. This is where your tail comes into place. So we're gonna just add our tail directly in here. And like I said, that tail, for me, it feels like it needs to be like here, but sadly the tail is not wired. It's all just foam. So again, flames or no flames, we can just lift up his snout, tuck our flames in, and then go through, like I said, and just start pulling out your pieces that you want. If you want to go wider, that is definitely something that you have within your means to do. You can pull your center pieces in a little bit more so they kind of cover your, your board a bit more. Do it here. Do it there, there, and there. But everything is in. It didn't fall apart. <laughs> That's always amazing, right? Because it's great that we can create things, but if it if it falls apart, uh, then what? Let me zoom in on that so you can actually see. I'm going to zoom in on that for you. So that is our dragon wreath dragon egg wreath let's just refashion that so a lot of options you're not stuck with one look or another we can position the wings we want to center it so the wings are centered it's entirely up to you so there are so many different color kits um there are red there's green there's blue there's pink it's like a pink purple there's a silver and a gold and a black, I think. So I have done them all with the exception of blue and purple, I think. Um, but I really wanted to try to experiment. I'm like, it's kind of cool because we have this opening, but then the opening, eh. I mean, like I said, you can take the egg out if you want. You can stick the egg back in if you want. You can take the flames out, don't put the flames in, take the tail off, move the face. It's kind of like we're creating a design that the customer can customize to whatever their desired look is for a finished design. Does that make sense? Okay, so don't forget, if you have not registered for the free classes that are going to be Wednesday and Thursday, they are not going to be in the public group. They're not going to be in my private group. You have to register for the VIP group. Just go to my website, which is pinned to the bottom, catscreationsandmore.com, or you can go to the top of this page. There's a pinned post that says register now for the two free classes. Click on that link and just request to join. That's all you need to do. And then if you forget about it, because you could be like, well, I have things to do tomorrow. And yeah, it kind of came a little last minute. Here's the great thing. Register for the class. You can watch the tutorials whenever you want. You have access to them for an entire year just on those two free tutorials. So um, there's no reason not to join, honestly. And if you'd like to join my regular private group, you can do so at my website at catscreationsandmore.com. I'd love to have you and teach you a ton of more stuff. But I hope you guys have an amazing night and that you enjoyed this tutorial. And then you share it if you really like it and um, it's available for sale. So I will talk to you all hopefully tomorrow in the free class. Talk to you then. Bye for now.